Very good day, beloved family of Christian Mission at Calvary. As always, it is a great blessing to be with you. Let us every day be edified from glory to glory, growing in the knowledge of Christ and knowing more of our model, which is Christ. We have been studying of the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, patience, benignity, kindness. In this opportunity, we'll be looking in the light of the scriptures, what is kindness. It's truly big what the word tells us about kindness or benignity. But when we meditate in the fruit of the Spirit, We, I found that we can't say, oh, I have so much love. For example, and one of the first things that we mention is love. And we can say that we keep love. But it's very necessary that the expression of the fruit is on each of the aspects that the Lord is teaching us. Through this teachings. So we can say it, I only have one or I only have two or three. Or we can say, oh, I have nothing. But rather than those uh, nine can be expressed in our life. And that's why it's so important that we keep growing and that we develop each one of these aspects that the Lord is teaching us. And definitely, this is a base, a foundation, that the nature of Christ is kind. He, God is kind. God is everything. In Psalms 135 verse 3 tells us, Praise the Lord for the Lord is good. Sing to his name for it is blessing. And it's not just this verse. There are many other verses that show us that God is good. He is good and He is kind. And absolutely, the kindness of God is great and is glorious and he could not just wants us to know that he is kind and that his kindness is great, but he also wants us to be able to see it and to experience it and taste it and taste that goodness and kindness of Christ. When we understand the kindness of God, we can enjoy it in great things, but also in the little things that some people could deem insignificant. But even in those things, we can enjoy the kindness of God. Truly, this week, as a family, we were able to see that kindness of God in His care and His protection. Truly, it is beautiful to see it. 
And like I was saying, not just to know that he is kind, but to be able to see it and to experience it. But certainly in ourselves to be able to give that fruit of kindness. And the book of James 3.17 says, The wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. Who is wisdom? Who is the wisdom? Definitely God is the wisdom. We can find in the book of Proverbs uh, that wisdom speaks. He is the wisdom. So the wisdom that comes from above, it's peaceable, it's pure, and is kind. and is full of mercy and good fruits and partial and sincere so god is kind and he is full of that kindness that mercy for each one of us and when it tells us here that the kind what well, how it is it's telling us that it's pure and open to reason. It's, that's how it is for us. And First Peter 5 tells us, If you have tested the kindness of the Lord, This part, the part of this verse is very interesting because it's telling us if you have tasted, if you have tasted it, if you have learned to enjoy the kindness of God, kindness for sure, it's speaking about character, the character of Christ. The other verses to this that I just mentioned are talking about the things that we need to put aside and then it gives us a list of things that we need to get rid of and what we are to long for in our development so when it's telling us that we have to get rid of all of that that is not from God and we have to get rid of it what is the purpose of that the, the purpose is so that we can grow and that we can have a full development in the Lord Now, this will only be possible when we have tested and tasted the goodness and the kindness of God. And that's what it tells us if we have tasted the goodness, the kindness of God. What happens when you try something like food or dessert? And you feel like it's the most delicious thing. And when people mention this to you, you can say, that is my favorite. Because I know how it tastes. And I have tried it. And, I... and when somebody offers you something else, you could be like, oh. I don't know if I'm going to like it. I'd rather go for this because I already know I do like it. So what beautiful it is for us to know 
that we have tasted that kindness of God. And that is why in us now we have that capacity and the ability to reject. And yes, it will be by the Spirit, but we also can discern between good and evil knowing that we have to reject and rebuke those things from our life and that we need to grow. And that's where the Lord is always reminding us. And I say remind us because I know that many of you already heard and know what is the fruit of the Spirit. But the Lord is taking us, both you and I, to grow and develop in that fruit of the Spirit. Because you as son and daughter of God have learned you have tasted you have tried and tasted the goodness and the kindness of God and with that understanding we will continue to look through the scriptures and I like to mention many verses because it doesn't have to just be our own concepts and what we think, but what the scripture tells us so that we can be fully convinced and assured of what is that we ought to do. The kindness of God takes us to repentance. In Romans chapter 4, verse, chapter 2, verse 4. Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? The kindness of God is leading us to repentance. The kindness of God is restoring men and his relationship with him given humanity the opportunity to repent from their sins for salvation and that is why God has been merciful and patient and loving he has been and he is he continues to be kind why because the Lord it the word says that he wants everyone to come to repentance and that is why this whole time he's been given us the opportunity to do so. We learn about the patience of God and how Noah was speaking to people and God gave them the opportunity to come into the ark. Obviously, they chose not to, but God always extended that possibility for them because of his own goodness and kindness. Because of his patience of who he is, that he is kind. And he gives every person the opportunity to repentance. And that's why it's so important. It has been said to us at Christian Mission, the Calvary, that we see the good news of salvation that we give those good news the goodness the kindness of god we can see it in many things and we could mention different aspects in reference to the kindness of god but this the kindness of god of giving us his presence 
there's nothing more beautiful than to be able to experience and to feel and to say to the Lord, thank you. Thank you for your presence. The kindness of God has given us that blessing to be able to enjoy His presence when we wake up, when we eat, when we go to rest, when we sleep, in the midst of the presence of God. Knowing in our heart and feeling the presence of God and being able to enjoy His presence in our home, His goodness. The goodness of kindness of God enjoys us to, allows us to enjoy His presence. How kind He is when He listens to us in our prayers. Those that are in accordance to His will, that He listens to us. That care that He always has for us is so great. And truly, this day is something that the Lord did in the midst of our family. I was telling the Lord, I am studying about kindness and I can see your kindness. I can see your kindness and the care and protection and in the control that you've taken over this situation. And so God takes care of us. And His protection is so great and so beautiful. He is kind in keeping His promises. He keeps His promises. It does not matter how long ago, how many years we have had to wait. But when we trust in the Lord, when we believe in Him, in His own time, as we saw in the last discipleship, He fulfills His promises. We were speaking about Abraham and how God kept His promise to him. After 25 years, but God kept His promise. And God keeps His promises. That is His kindness at fulfilling his promises and also to his provision as he gives us his blessings because truly provision is a blessing from God it's not the same for someone to have money because they worked or because they did this or they did that but it's very different when their provision has come directly from God as a blessing and we could probably mention many more aspects and perhaps you where you are you already thought of how kind the Lord has been to your own life I would like for us to see some because there are many and that's what I'm saying some of the kindness of God. Mark 10, 9, 10, tells us. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. Here, we are talk. The story is talking to us about this blind man. 
and how he will call out to Jesus to have mercy on him. And many people will reprimand him and rebuke him for him to stop. But Jesus called on him. And here is what we see the kindness of Jesus. We can see it in his compassion and also in his mercy. The blind man was calling out, asking for mercy. What did Jesus felt? What is that? What was the move, Jesus, to attend to this man that was screaming after Jesus? We all know that Jesus felt that compassion for people and for the needy. God's compassion moved move him. In Matthew 14, 14, we see how he fed, he fed uh, the five towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them and healed their What is that Jesus had for these people? It says that Jesus had compassion on them. And kindness has to do with this, with kindness and mercy. He had mercy on them because he is kind. And the other example with, that looks like as if it was the same is when he fed the 4,000. These were two different occasions. One time it was 5,000 and the other one was 4,000. Mark chapter 8 verse 2. I have compassion on the crowd. I have compassion on the crowd. Because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from far away. Look how the kindness of God, of the Lord is manifested. It says, I have compassion of the crowd. Why did he have compassion of the crowd? For sure, it's because he was kind and loving. And he was not worried, but he was caring for them. And he said, and if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. Imagine this, there were children in the crowd and they had come from who knows how far away. But Jesus himself tells them, and some of them have come from far away. So the kindness and compassion of Jesus, you know what happened in this occasion? He tells his disciples to feed them and the multiplication of the fishes and the bread. And these people did not faint on the way back. But Jesus was concerned. He cared for other people. He was not just thinking of himself. And that is important. What Kindness does. We care for others. We care for other people. 
there's another example that we see it's in Luke chapter 10 verse 12 to 15 as he drew near to the gate of the town a man who had died was being carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow and a considerable crowd from the town was with her and when the Lord saw her he had compassion on her and said to her do not weep then he came up and touched the bier of the bearers stood still and he said young man I said to you arise and the dead man sat up and began to speak and Jesus gave him to his mother look at this example for sure this woman was crying because of the death of her son but Jesus, Jesus, he saw this mother and had compassion on her. The Lord showing us his kindness. She resurrects the son and gives him back to her. Mark chapter 1 verses 41 40 and 42 and a leper came to him imploring him and kneeling said to him if you will you can make me clean moved with pity he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him I will be clean And immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean here we see another word he had mercy and he had pity on him in other parts we see that he had He was kind but kindness also has to do with kindness can be shown and kindness it's a willingness in our character and attitudes remember that we are talking about the character of Christ and how it is kind and so the willingness of character and attitudes that is what we ought to have if we know that God is kind and that Christ is kind then we also ought to be people that are kind. And this has to do with our relationship with others. And is characterized by being good to others and being comprehensive to others or to a group of people and as a synonym of goodness, mercy, tenderness, compassion, it also has to do with sweetness. Uh, definitely has to be a sweetness in the character and the way that we treat others and the way that we speak to them. Integrity and gentleness with our neighbor what a problem it is truly what is so hard for humans which is to relate to others 
you can find a school and what do you see there? Okay, children are fighting and there's problems because of a pencil or an eraser or uh, whatever it may be. And even in the homes, there are bad relationships. They can't be together because then there's problems. I recently spoke to a lawyer and she was telling me in the time of the pandemic, it's when we had, I had the most work. I did not suffer from work in the pandemic because is the, that was the time when there were more divorces. And yes, we were able to see and we said, now that people are in close encounters, now that we are not allowed to go out and it was, it was terrible. People had to be quarantined in their homes. And you can just imagine what happened in those homes. I was seriously thinking about it because I was thinking they're not used to be together. The man goes to work or the woman goes to and the kids go to school. But how are they going to do now to be together in one home? And what's exactly so? Many divorces happen in that period of time. Why? Because the family, even though it was a family, were not used to live as a family and to have good relationships. Because if they did, They would have done a picnic or do something in the in the backyard or whatever space they had available. They would have done perhaps games. They would have done something. They would have been so happy to be together for gathering together. But this didn't happen. Why? because the bad relationships they had. Even in the congregations, there are problems. Why? Because of bad relationships. Because they don't know how to relate with others. Because there's things of uh, jealousy and envy and you know so many things that happen. Because they can't, we don't know how to have a relationship with other people. So what is kindness has to do with other people. It has to do with our relationships in the work, in the home, in the workplace, everywhere that we go. And definitely within the church. We should have a good relationship with others. Sometimes in the church, we have friends in the world, but in the church, we can't find friends. And that is out of the will of the Father. Because it's there where we find the people that love God and that love each other. People that are sincere and that can uh, edify each other. So it's very important to know and not just to to know someone, 
and to understand that it's good to have relationships, but they don't know how to do it because their attitudes and their actions are completely opposite. Kindness is also an attractive quality. Kindness is an attractive quality that is not only expressed in our facial expressions, but also through our words and our actions. And the way that we speak to people and the way that we react with others. That goodness and kindness has to do with a good temperament and refined, refined in our character and in our actions. Someone that is not causing any harm being kind reveals a good character that is not harsh. But kindness should be our characteristic as disciples of Christ because it's the reflection of Jesus in us. And it should be a characteristic of us to be kind and to be people that so that others want to be with us. How hard it is to be in a meeting where somebody arrives and they said, oh, this or that person is coming. Oh, the party is ruined. Oh, there's going to be no more peace here. Why? Because somebody that likes to be in conflict or that is offensive. Someone that is going to do something unpleasant. Why? Because of their bad attitudes. Because of their bad character and temperament because they're harsh and with their words and they're sarcastic because of the words that have a double meaning that are going to come and hurt and the Lord is allowing us to know even more about the fruit of the Spirit and this is a beautiful fruit, which is kindness, which is to be kind. And absolutely, it's to one another and be good to one another. As human beings, the Lord made us sociable. Because he made us in accordance to his likeness because of his own nature and so he made us sociable there could be many problems in the home as i was mentioning and even in the church many of those problems are caused because of our bad relationships with others we have not seen the importance that this has of learning to relate and I want to highlight this that I mentioned earlier we have to learn we can learn everything in life none of us was born knowing everything we all have learned and we continue to learn we continue to learn and so we have to learn to be sociable people that know how to relate with others 
oh, was that I'm not kind because my father wasn't kind, so I'm not going to be kind. Well, perhaps you were not. But now that you are in Christ, you ought to be. We are all different. There are many of us that don't know how to have relationships with others. And there are some of us that do know how to relate with others. And that we have no problem to relate with other people and we don't see the color or the language. We make no exception of people. It's actually so easy to relate with others. But there are some that never learn in their homes how to relate with others and we feel like we can't and that we don't know but that is why the lord is teaching us what are teachings for for us to learn so the lord continues to teach us so that we can learn to have good relationships with other people Ah, oh, no, is that with that person is impossible. Ah, oh, no, is that that other person? It's just I can't. But each one of us has to learn. We have to learn what it is to be kind and merciful and good with other people. In the book of Titus 3.2, and an English version that is the common English Bible tells us, they shouldn't speak disrespectfully about anyone, but they should be peaceful, kind, and show complete courtesy toward everyone this verse is so clear they shouldn't speak disrespectfully about anyone but they should be peaceful kind and show complete courtesy toward everyone how important it is to be kind and to be and have that courtesy with others and many people could say oh well that is lost here and we may be on a bus in the past the men or the young men will give you will stand up and give their seat to a to a child even but now it's rare that someone would do that because it's been lost or they never had it that having that courtesy to other people because there's only a personal interest and there's no longer an interest for others We have to treat others just as Christ has treated us with so much goodness and kindness. And being kind with others. Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 tells us, Instead, we were like young children among you, just as nursing mother cares for her children. So we cared for you because we loved you so much. We were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Apostle Paul 
is speaking here about the care that they had for them. And it says here that they had so much care for them. It's a treatment that is with finesse, with being nice as a mother that cares for her children because of the love they have. So we care for you because we love you. And we were delighted to share with you not just the gospel. And I like this part when it says to share with you not just the gospel, but our lives as well. What is Apostle Paul saying here? It's telling us that they gave themselves to people. Oh, no, but I am a servant of God, and I am here to give the word. Yes, you're here to give the word, but you are here also to give yourself to others with how you treat them with your kindness but also with care with love with respect with that finesse with other people here apostle paul is showing us an example of that kindness he could have demanded from them because he was an apostle but he treats them with that kindness and he is considerate to them he loves shows love that same verse first Thessalonians 2 7 tells us but we were gentle among you, like a nurse mother taking care of her own children. And it says, but we were gentle among you. And we were talking about that finesse, that care. And it says we were gentle. How many times we could be gentle with people? Or perhaps we're harsh or we could be offensive and hurting others. But how good it is to hear, and it says, we were gentle with you. So it's important to share the word, but also with that tenderness of our character, and for sure, the character of Christ. And the TLA version tells us with much love and tenderness. So speaking about love and, and another version says as a mother that is loving and takes care of her own children. Imagine the example that's given to us here. And another version tells us, with sweetness, we treated you with tenderness and with love as a loving mother would. Goodness and kindness have to do with that sweetness. The Lord does not want for us to be of a bitter character but he wants us to have that sweetness to treat people that are older and to treat any kind of person even children I remember that long time ago something called my attention and and the churches they used to make parties and they will put 
the tables and they will say oh this is for the adults and the children they'll come last and I will say well why why do they leave us children to the end and I began to teach children when I was 13 and I began to help my teacher in the church and I started to work with children in the Bible school. And I will say, no, children must be among the first. And when the Lord allowed us and we said with Apostle and the church of the 1st of July, that church was full with children. And we had so many children, so many. And in any meeting, it was the children first. Then it was the adults. Why? Because I believe the love for children is very important. Even Jesus himself said to his disciples, let the little ones come to me because to them belongs the kingdom of God. There's another example that I used to see when there used to be ushers in the church and the children will run in the temple and they will take them and shake them and take them out and i said no that is not how it is it is very important i believe that we can learn to be kind and good to others, kind and good and merciful also with children. We have to remember that what we are sowing today in them is so important because when they become adults, they will never forget it. They will never forget us. And so that sweetness in our treatment to other people is very important apostle peter he encouraged the pastors not to have a dominion over people but to be of an example of the things that they would do but he was referring to that treatment to others. First Peter 5 two and 2. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight not under compulsion, but willingly as God will have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly not dom domineering over those in your charge, but being examples of the flock. And this is speaking about that treatment to other people, to those that God has put under our care. Second Timothy 2.24 tells us, And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, Kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil. Correcting his opponents with gentleness, God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth. Here he's making an emphasis how the servant of the Lord has to be kind, that they have to be able to correct with gentleness, not with um, threatening, but with gentleness and kindness. And so it's very important that each servant of God 
we learn how to treat others just as Christ has treated us with so much kindness and gentleness. To be kind with others. And so it is very important in the work that we do with people and to know how to relate with them. In the book of Ephesians, chap chapter 4, verses 31 and 32, all bitterness, wrath, and vexation and shouting and backbiting with all kinds of malice banish out from you. On the contrary, be mutually affable, pleasant, mild, and cordial with each other, compassionate, giving one another, forgiving one another, just as God has forgiven you through Christ. Firstly, he's talking about the things that we have to get rid of. Bitterness, wrath, vexation, and shouting, and all this is what happens in our relationships. Because if a person is mistreating somebody and don't know how to relate with other people, it has to be because there are a person that is bitter and that is resentful and that is trying to take that bitterness out on others and the way we say that much here in Guatemala that we allow others to pay for that bitterness that we have in our hearts anger how many people they just throw things here and there and just they don't care that anger That anger could do so much harm when somebody has that much anger. That's where they are able to hit someone and hurt and, and so much more and they don't care. And that is why this verse is telling us that we have to banish this out from us. But on the contrary, we have to be affable, compassionate, and forgiving one another, just as God forgave you through Christ. Here, the Lord is exhorting us and urging us to be kind. But before we do that, we have to get rid of those things, banish out those things. Ephesians chapter 4, this same verse, all bitterness, wrath, and vexation, shout in a back bitter, with all kinds of malice, banish out from you. On the contrary, be mutually affable. What does this mean? Pleasant, mild, and cordial to each other. Compassionate, forgiving one another, just as God has forgiven you through I like this version very much because in the regular version we we read differently. Now this says to we have to get rid of, but this says we have to banish it. Completely banish this out of our lives from us. And it's saying that we have to be the opposite. 
and that bitterness and anger and become people that are affable. Which means pleasant. A person that is pleasant, that is mild, that is cordial to each uh, to each other. And I am not talking about just sweet talking to someone and just to be a hypocrite and smile while later on we we're talking bad about them. No, I'm talking about that sincere treatment with others and that cordial relationship with each other. So the key word in this verse is to banish, completely banish out from our life. Other versions say to put away. This means that it's your and my responsibility to put away and to get rid of all of these things that stop us from being uh, affable and pleasant and mild with a conduct that could be a blessing to other people. How important it is that you and I can learn, that we can learn to be this kind of people that are definitely the Lord wants us to be. That He is taking us to be this kind of people. In the book of Colossians, chapter 3 verses 12 and 13 it tells us put on then as God's chosen ones holy and beloved compassionate hearts kindness humility meekness and patience Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. How important it is what the Lord is telling us here. And different uh, passages from the scriptures we read about this putting on this putting on of the new man and rejecting getting rid of the old and many things that the lord is telling us how we are to present ourselves here is telling us to put on as good God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts. We were looking into the mercy of Jesus and his kindness and humility, the meekness. What is our part now? As we were saying, what is our own responsibility? 
with the help of the Lord, we will continue in another discipleship. But I want to read again that same verse. And that same passage on a different version, the BLS. It's a, it's a different version. And it tells us, God loves you very much. And He has chosen you to be part of His people. That is why live as is expected of you. Love others. Be good, humble, kind, and patient. Be tolerant with each other. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. Just as the Lord has forgiven you. But I really like this part where it says, that is why live as expected of you. Love others, be good, humble, kind, patient. Live as is expected of you. Who is expecting something from us? Firstly, it's the Lord. Because he is expecting for us to be found approved in every aspect of our lives. He is expecting that from you and he is expecting that from me and your family. Also your co-workers and classmates. The people, your neighbors. And definitely all the nations are expecting of the people of Christian Mission, the Calvary, of men and women, the, of servants of God, servants of God, that are li living as is expected of us. And what is expected of us? That we love others, that we're good, humble, kind, and patient. That we be tolerant and meek with others. That we can let us learn from each portion of the scriptures. What do we have to put away? What do we have to banish? And let us grow in the knowledge of the Son of God in regards to what it is to be good and kind and merciful and compassionate. We will continue with this subject of kindness. But today I want us to bow down and give thanks to the Lord. Father, we thank you for teaching us and for taking us to where you want us to be. Thank you, Lord, because you have been speaking to us of how we need to be approved by you. And that approval is going to come from you, not only because in our lives we speak, but also we live. We live in that reality, your reality. We are living how you want us to. And just as is expected from each son and daughter of you in Christian mission, the Calvary. Lord, 
let the fruit continue to be worked in us so that we may become your own expression for that the kindness and that is in the Father and in the Son, that same expression may be in us, that we may be the kind of people that with the power of your Holy Spirit and with the fruit of your Holy Spirit, we may be people that are kind, people that are good, that know how to relate with other people, and merciful, compassionate. Let your glory be manifested in each home, in each family, in each church, and may you be glorified in the midst of us. We thank you, Lord. All the glory be to you forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings to each one of you.